today Come and fill my very soul Come into my heart and stay You are all I need to know No one else in heaven and earth Shows your mercy, grace and love I turn to you and humbly pray For your blessings from above Come fill my heart, come live in my soul Restore the peace, Lord make me Drive the sin and doubt away Give me hope to carry on Shower down on me your grace Till my cup will overflow Take me to a holy place Let the faith within me grow Come fill my heart Come Restore the peace, Lord, make me whole. Mighty Savior, Lord, most high, hear my yearning, hear my cry. Come fill my heart, come live in my soul. Restore the peace, Lord, make me whole. All I am, I give to you in your grace. Spirit who brings a fire 
ignites a candle and makes his home. Carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the helpless, confused and torn, and hold out your candle for all to see. Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle and go light your world. Frustrated brother, see how he's tried to. Light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to. Still holds a candle without a flame. So carry your candle and run to the darkness. Seek out the love. Whose hearts are blazing, so let's raise our candles and light up the sky. Praying to our Father in the name of Jesus, make us a beacon in darkest times. Carry your candle, run to. Go light your world. Good morning to you all. Hope you had a good week. Uh, like I have had a very good week last week. Today we will be studying, continuing our study of the book of Isaiah. Uh, a couple, uh, I, I'll start with an illustration or a couple of illustrations to help you understand what the book of Isaiah chapter 58 is talking about. A couple with only one child of three years old visited a mall. While they were shopping, the child saw a huge bar of chocolate. He asked his mother for it. She refused because he was asking for something that was very expensive and she could not afford it. And the other thing is she realized that if that bar of chocolate was given to her son, he would not rest 
until he finished it. She also knew that he was likely to get a stomach upset because it has happened before with a bar of chocolate half the size of the one he was asking for. When the mother refused to give him the bar of chocolate, the child started crying. And when that did not have the desired effect, threw a tantrum, screaming and rolling on the floor. This was embarrassing to the young couple as it drew the attention of many of the customers around and also the attendants. Some ignored the child and the parents and went their way, while others stood around watching this child and giving dirty looks at the parents and the child. The parents realized that and were pretty sure the, the, the people watching were thinking in their minds, what a spoiled child. What are the parents doing to raise, in raising up this child? Embarrassed, embarrassed by what was happening, the parents gave in and the child got what he wanted. In the short term, they solved their problem. But in the long term, they are setting themselves up for a much greater problem that would not easily go away. We may not have realized it, but sometimes we throw a tantrum with God and expect him to satisfy our wants. Now, if he doesn't, we wonder why God is not hearing us. This can lead us to sulk and tell God or threaten God that we will no longer worship him or acknowledge his existence. God is a good parent and he is not impressed with this kind of, this kind of an attitude or if we throw a tantrum. He will not give in to us when we have this kind of attitude, but will try to correct us and take us away from this kind of a selfish attitude. Very early in the history of mankind, we find an incident similar to what happened uh, with the child happened with, in the early days of mankind. Cain and, and his brother Abel brought a sacrifice to God, but Abel's sacrifice was accepted by God and not Cain's. This made Cain angry with God. Since he could not take his anger out on God, he turned on his brother Abel in, in order to get back at God in that way. God knew his intentions and spoke to him. Notice what he said in Genesis 4 verses 6 to 7. Genesis 4 verses 6 to 7 from the Message Bible. God spoke to Cain, why this tantrum? Why the sulking? If you do well, won't you be accepted? And if you don't do well, sin is lying in wait for you, ready to pounce. It's out to get you. You got to master it. God corrected Cain and encouraged him to get rid of the selfish attitude of me first. Cain did not take God's advice and we know what happened as a result. Today in studying Gen uh, Isaiah 58, we'll be, we'll be studying about the spiritual discipline of fasting. I will break down this chapter in parts and study them separately. Many of the writings of Isaiah were prophetic, covering a time which had not yet happened. The chapter seems to refer to the time when the Jews were released from captivity in Babylon and went to Jerusalem to build the temple and the city. However, things did not work well for them. The temple was in disarray and so was their lives. And the people, the strangers and the people around that area where they were staying were harassing them. They fasted, but God did not seem to listen to their prayers. They expressed their frustration to God in Isaiah. We'll read from chapter from verse 1 to 9 at the moment. Isaiah 58 verses 1 to 9. Shout, a full-throated shout. Hold nothing back. A trumpet blast shout. Tell my people what's wrong with their lives. Face my family, Jacob, with their sins. They are busy, busy, busy at worship. I love studying all about me. To all appearances, they are a nation, they are a nation of right living people, law abiding, God honoring. They ask me, what, what's the right thing to do? 
and love having me on their side but they also complain do we why do we fast and you don't look our way why do we humble ourselves and you don't even notice well here's why the bottom line on your fast days is profit you drive your employees much too hard you fast but at the same time you bicker and fight you fast but you swing a mean fist the kind of fasting you do won't get your prayers off the ground do you think this is the kind of fast i am after a day to show off humility to put on a pious long face and parade around solemnly in black do you call that fasting a fast day that i god would like this is the kind of fast i am after to break the chains of injustice get rid of exploitation in the workplace free the oppressed cancel debts what i'm interested in seeing you do is sharing your food with the hungry inviting the homeless poor to your homes putting clothes on the shivering ill clad being available for your own family do this and the light will turn on and your lives will turn around at once your righteousness will pave your way the god of glory will secure your passage then when you pray god will answer you'll call out for help and i'll say here i am now what was happening in this particular situation that when the people came to jerusalem the jews came to jerusalem some of the people who were there were well endowed they were had enough money and and the things that they carried along with them to to be able to settle down there in jerusalem while many or the majority did not have much did not have enough of anything and so when they came there they needed a lot of stuff that they did not have and they had to go to the rich people to get it or even to get money they had to go to the rich people to get the money and instead of helping them these rich people took advantage of their situation and exploited them if they were taken as employees they exploited them and they made them work too hard and those people the poor people were forced in order to survive they were forced to do what they were told to do now the rich among them and this new rich class that was created over here were appeared to be very religious they tried to do things according to god's law in so far as it was connected with god in other words they were trying to curry favor with god so that god would hear their prayers and answer them while they neglected what was more important looking after their own people and sometimes they never neglected their own family and god was angry with them because that was a hypocritical attitude that god was not very pleased to see and therefore he would not hear their prayers or answer their prayers there are several ways we can worship god we can worship him in prayer meditation study of his word and fasting but if we want our worship fasting and prayer to work we need to include some important ingredients in our spiritual disciplines we often fast because we want something or we need something from god fasting involves actually honoring god with love and submission and not trying to force his hand so he, so we can get our own way our fasting does not give us what we want because instead of fasting so god will 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 be done we fast for god to do our will we need to make request to god not demands our attitude of demanding just like the attitude of the boy who was demanding the chocolate from uh, his uh, from his uh, parents and forced their hands will not work with god our fasting should be submitting to god and letting god's will be done in our lives fasting is not pulling god to our will but aligning our will to the will of god i am sure you i am sure you have seen people shouting in their prayer to god shaking their fist banging their fist on the podium while they repeatedly make their demands to god 
so that he gives them what they want. They quote scripture where God promises something and demands that that promise sh should be kept. And they should receive what God has promised. So their prayer is not a humble prayer. It's an arrogant prayer demanding from God what he does not really in some cases wants to give them. Instead of the Jews at Jerusalem working together in unity to build the temple, it was each man for himself. The stronger, richer and the more powerful oppressed the poor and needy to their ends. In turn, they were, they were, host, they were, uh, they were oppressed by hostile neighbors around them who took advantage of the disunity and discord. We cannot worship God in sincerity if we do not reach out to others. God wants us to go beyond our spiritual and physical growth to acts of kindness, charity, justice and generosity. Fasting should help us change our attitude to ourselves and others. God told Cain the same thing. Let's go on to Isaiah 58 verses 9 to 10. God goes on to say, if you get rid of unfair practices, quit blaming victims, quit gossiping about other people's sins. If you are generous with the hungry and start giving yourself to the down and out, your lives will begin to glow in the darkness. Your shadowed lives will be bathed in sunlight. We should be careful not to judge or blame others because we often do not know, have the facts and we cannot see the hearts of others. Leave the judging to God and do our best to help others, including the ones we know who are not doing things right. We will not join them, but we will not also condemn them. This does not mean that we condone sin. We should condemn the sin, but not the sinner. That is God's job. Once our attitude and actions change, our entire life will change. God promises us in verses 11 and 12, I will always show you where to go. I will I'll give you a full life in the emptiest of places, firm muscles, strong bones. You'll be like a well-watered garden, a gurgling spring that never runs dry. You'll use the old rubble of past lives to build a new, rebuild the foundations from out of your past. You'll be known as those who can fix anything, restore all ruins, rebuild and renovate, make the community livable again. We find a close parallel to Isaiah 58 in Matthew chapter 6 verses 16 to 18 where it talks about fasting also and our attitude, approach and even our, the way we should look when we fast. Matthew 6 verses 16 to 18 When you practice some appetite denying disciplines which means fasting to better concentrate on God don't make a production out of it. It might turn you into a small time celebrity but it won't make you a saint. If you go into training inwardly, act normally outwards, outwardly. Shampoo and comb your hair, brush your teeth, wash your face. God doesn't require attention-getting devices. He won't overlook what you are doing. He'll, he'll reward you well. God does not honor show-offs. If we show our righteousness to others by broadcasting our prayers, fasting and other disciplines, we have already received our reward. If we compare ourselves with others, climb over others to achieve something, backbite, slander, be a tail bearer or a busybody, we become like Satan, who stood before God and when God praised his servant Job, slandered him, informed God that Job's motives were not right and that if his circumstances were changed for the worse, he would turn on God. 
we see another example of an attitude that god does not like and the one he likes in the example of the pharisee and the and the tax collector luke records the parable of jesus by starting with a punchline in luke chapter 18 verses 9 to 14 luke 18 verses 9 to 14 he says to some who were confident of their righteousness and look down on everyone else god told the parable of the of the pharisee and the tax collector notice what it says here to some who were confident of their righteousness and look down on everyone else god told this parable the pharisee thanked god for not making him like the other people around him He, he enumerated the worst of sinners and he included the tax collector who happened to be there at that time in his prayer and he was praying aloud so everyone could hear what he was saying straight off when you see his prayer we can see arrogance there self righteousness and a judgmental attitude he then relates to god and actually he mean is actually relating to all the people around there that he fast twice a week and he pays his tithes he wants to show the people how religious he is and how upright he is and then he goes on to tell god that i really don't need anything from you but i'm rather wanting to give you all that i have all he was doing was praying to himself not to god so he was think and he was and while he was thinking in his mind showing uh, while he, in his mind he was proud and he was speaking and trying to impress god with the things that he was doing so we can see the attitude on one hand of the pharisee and then we go to the tax collector the tax collector didn't, didn't even think he was fit to enter the synagogue and pray, pray or to turn his uh, turn up and look at the heavens he prayed quietly in the corner his prayer was to ask god for mercy admitting that he was a sinner he did not compare himself with anyone else or speak ill of the pharisee he concentrated on his relationship with god and a desire to be forgiven and reconciled with god even though he did not feel he deserved it and the parable ends with for all those who exalt themselves will be humble and those who humble themselves will be exalted the purpose of the law and the keeping of it is to give direction to our love for god and for our neighbor not to draw attention of our uh, to our relative relative purity as compared to other sinners the aim of prayer is not to pray uh, not to not the praise of others directed towards us but the intercession for others directed towards god we should not demand anything from god or throw a tantrum or scream god is not impressed with our arrogant behavior and action as he is not as he was not impressed with the false teachers of the times of the time of isaiah or elijah who screamed and shouted at their gods from sunrise to sunset as they danced around the sacrifice calling their gods to send fire from heaven to burn their sacrifice they even inflicted stab wounds on their body to make their point but it did not work and this kind of because they were praying to the false gods that they believed in and not believed in a not the true god and that God is not impressed by such violent prayers. While Elijah just said a very short prayer quietly, and God answered his prayer by sending fire down from heaven to burn the sacrifice. God exposes self-centered pietism as a perversion of the Father's will, actually opposing opposed to His divine purpose. Let us look at a couple of examples of the right attitude to fasting. When Moses fasted on Mount Sinai for forty days, he prayed for himself and the people he was going to lead to the Promised Land. 
At the end of the fast, God gave him the Ten Commandments. Jesus also fasted 40 days. He fasted to prepare himself for, himself for his ministry and inquire of God who would be part of his team. After he fasted, he slammed the devil for trying to tempt him. Satan's timing was wrong, though he did not realize it. He hoped to touch the human side of Jesus because he knew that Jesus was physically weak from the fast. He completely ignored that Jesus had been with God 40 days in close contact with him. His spiritual antenna was at the highest. He slammed Satan, Satan with words of God. Satan had no option but to slink away defeated. We too have a ministry and hopefully we fast to ask God to help us in our ministry. God knows what we need. He will give us what we need even if we don't ask. But he wants us to ask correctly. And he wants us to have the right priorities in our asking. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 9 to 12. 1 Peter 2 verses 9 to 12. But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you, not nothing from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. Friends, this world is not your home, so don't make yourself cozy in it. Don't indulge your ego at the expense of your soul. Live an exemplary life, exemplary life among the natives, so that your actions will refute their prejudices. Then you'll be won over to God's side and be there to join in the celebration when he arrives. Every major decision in our lives or the life of the church should be accompanied by prayer and fasting. Notice a couple of examples in the Bible in the early church. Acts chapter 13 verse 2. Acts 13 verse 2. While they were worshipping and fasting, the Lord and fasting the Holy Spirit said set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them and Acts chapter 14 verse 23 notice that the prayers and the fasting that they did was to come in, 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 in communion in harmony with God's will and God told them what his will was Acts 14 verse 23, Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. God desires that we love him as he loves us. When he disciplines us, it hurts him as much as it hurts us. Now if you're a parent, you'll understand and have children, you'll understand what I mean. In our case, our hurt goes a little beyond that, uh, the point of just being hurt, is that we wonder whether our child's misbehavior is somehow our fault. We want our child to model God the way we are striving to model him. Like the insert a little boy in the mall, condoning something that is wrong under pressure only makes things worse. Dealing with it so that it does not happen again helps everyone. Disciplining like fasting is hard. We would like to avoid it as far as possible. But when we see a need to do so, let us do so with the right attitude and approach. We are not looking at how many people we can attract to our religious organization. Many organizations are vying for the attention of a skeptical community that sees us as little more than religious entrepreneurs seeking to dominate a depressed market. Instead of focusing on the pure gospel of Christ, 
we seek catchy phrases and attractive trends to gain attention and approval of those around us. Instead, we should do everything to, we can to obtain forgiveness and mercy from God for, uh, for us and for others that come in contact with Him and with us. God is not looking to us to gain popularity or position in the society for Him. He can, look, he can do that for Himself if He so chooses. God is looking for people who understand what His will is, a, a people called by His name who humble themselves and pray and fast to seek His face and turn from their wicked ways. Isaiah 58 ends with verses 13 and 14 which say, If you watch your step on the Sabbath and don't use my holy days for personal advantage, if you treat the Sabbath as a day of joy, God's holy day as a celebration, if you honor it by refusing business as usual, making money, running here and there, then you'll be free to enjoy God. Or, oh, I'll make you ride high and so above it all. I'll make you feast on the inheritance of your ancestors, Jacob. Yes, God says so. The Jews released from captivity went to Jerusalem. They were free and able to keep the Sabbath and the festivals as God had intended it. Before that, they could not because they were slaves in a foreign land. And keeping these things according to God's way. Now, they actually tried. But it did not work because there were several other things they had to do that they did not do. They celebrated the holy days, but they celebrated it for themselves without considering that all the Jews around them should also be celebrating along with them. And that's the way God made those, those, those festivals. He said, enjoy, but also remember the ones who are not in a position to enjoy and make sure you make them part of that enjoyment. God abhors a selfish behavior. God is love. He has everything. But he is not satisfied in enjoying everything he has alone. He wants to share it with us. He also wants us to be like him. He is creating a group of individuals he calls to love him and love one another with a love that has no bounds. It goes far beyond a physical family, even though we use that as an analogy. We have no family in this world that matches the family God is creating. God is creating a community of believers that are one with him and one with each other, a unit so close that it makes us live and move as one body and with one spirit, the spirit of God. Fasting works, but it also involves work on our part. A work that with God's help, we will never fail to do. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our gracious Father in heaven, our loving God, our selfless God, who wants a wants to make us like yourself. Thank you for being the God you are. We know that if you were or you had a different nature than what you have, we would not even exist. But Father, you're patient, you're long-suffering, and you want to bless us with all that you have. You're a giving God and gener having a generosity that is beyond compare and without limit. Thank you for being what you, whom you are, Father. And thank you for treating us the way you do. We ask you, Father, to help us to learn of your ways. Learn of your ways, not just for ourselves, but for everyone around us. Help us to learn to share with other people, especially the ones who are in need, so that we are able to, in that process, Carry forward the blessings that you are giving us. Guide us in that process, Father. And we know that we aren't by nature very selfless individuals. 
We tend to be very selfish in all the things that we do. But you are the one who will make us selfless. Help us in that struggle. And help us to remember when we fast, our fast, like our prayers, should not be selfish fast, uh, fast and prayers, but rather it should be fast and prayers to help us change our ways, help you to bless us so that we can take our blessings to others around us, share it with others. That's the way you want us to have, the kind of attitude you want us to have in our lives. We thank you for teaching us your ways, Father, and we know that however hard we try, we are not likely to become perfect. But we know one thing that we should do our part and that you will do the rest in our lives and take us to the point where you feel we have reached the, the process as far as we can go and you can take us on to the next step or the next place where you want us to be. Help us always to be submissive to you and submit to you in everything. Even though sometimes we, you, you, we may not, we may receive what we do not expect and we do not get what we expect. Guide us in that process and help us to be moldable and shapeable so that you can shape us to whatever you want us to be. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to worship you, Father, to study your word and to understand it. Help us to apply everything in our lives. Thank you for all the blessings and for this opportunity we had to be with you and to study your word. And we ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Oh